abiondemand.com. Automotive training you can receive anywhere, anytime. Your online training starts here. Now, a couple of concerns the customers come in with are going to be trouble codes, you know, check engine lights on, could be making noise. You know, there's nothing worse than those clattering turbos. Number one concern is going to be obviously low power, and in some diesel applications, we'll see a, a smoke concern. The vehicle's rolling coal or, or blowing out too much black smoke, meaning we don't have a proper balance of air and fuel there. We've got too much fuel, not enough air. So what are a couple possible causes of underboost that we need to look for? Well, first one is the scenario where the wastegate may be stuck open. You know, this wastegate, we got the actuator here. Some of these older applications, the shaft begins to wear out at some point. Uh, I've seen them rust up. I live in the rust belt up in Michigan. And so, yes, we see enough rust build up on these things that eventually that wastegate will stick open. I've also seen a lot of different applications on newer, smaller turbos where the wastegate or the, the seat in the wastegate will actually crack due to so much heat. And so that's going to allow air to bypass it as well, acting as if the wastegate was open. So always, always be sure that the wastegate is actually sealed and completely closed off. Another possibility here is that you've got a leak between the compressor and the throttle. So when it leaves the, the compressor side of the turbo, it's going to go through a series of duct work, typically to your charge air cooler, and then it's going to go from the charge air cooler over to the throttle body. And we've got a series of hoses with numerous clamps. Those need to be special clamps. We don't want them to be just a regular old hose clamp that we're going to be using there. And so uh, make sure you've got proper clamps and they're in place. Now, quite often as we've got the hard tubing there, it's going to be connected via a series of rubber boots. Where do you think these are going to fail? Well, it's not going to be on the top one on the top side of it. Usually, in my personal experience, I've found it to be on the bottom side of one of the lower boots there. Remember, we've got oil going through the system. And so, yes, it's normal to have a little bit of a blow-by through the turbo. Where is it going to sit? It's going to sit at the lowest point of the system which again is going to be at the bottom near the intercooler there. And so on the bottom side of those boots, after it collects oil over enough years of use, uh, it's going to start dilapidating the rubber and you'll get a little bit of a split there. So you need to look and ensure that you've got a properly sealed charge system between the turbo and the throttle plate. Well, how do we test the wastegate solenoid? In the scenarios here, I've, well, one thing we're going to do is grab your hand mighty vac there and apply pressure and or vacuum depending on the specific system you're using here and then you need to use a scan tool with bi-directional controls or if you don't we're going to apply a power and ground make sure you consult service information to to look at the uh, the wire schematic for this but we need to actuate this and make sure that it's able to bleed off the pressure vacuum as specified and make sure to actuate it multiple times i have also seen these where you actuate it once it works perfectly fine second time not as good by the time you've actuated it three, four times, got a little bit of heat to it, now all of a sudden that's when it starts to fail. So we want to apply pressure vacuum to the, the specified port, actuate it with our scan tool, hopefully, and make sure that it consistently works the way we intend it to be. And as I mentioned, make sure that the clamps are applied properly. Who knows who's been in there last? I've even caught myself misapplying the, the clamps, mispositioning them, don't have them situated properly, creating my own little leak. They need to make sure that the system is completely sealed off. Now let's look at the other side here. Very rarely does the customer come in and say, you know what, my car's got too much power. What are the causes of overboost? Well, if the wastegate can get stuck open, it can also get stuck shut. Maybe one of the hoses came off of it. You know, that's a very likely possibility here. You know, if one of these hoses come off, now this wastegate's gonna be stuck at all time. The vehicle has no control over that. Hopefully it would set a trouble code, but you never know. Another potential possibility here is this vent solenoid is stuck in the vent position. Again, if it can get stuck in the, in the closed position, it can get stuck in the open position, which would mimic that hose being off. And so we've got no pressure being applied to the wastegate on this vehicle. And so it's gonna keep it shut, allowing that vehicle to continue to build boost, which seems like fun at first, but it could have catastrophic implications to the internal components of the engine. Thanks for watching this video presentation. If you'd like some more training, just go to aviondemand.com or go to one of our social sites. That's all the time for now. I'm Steve. I'll see you later.